The purple head track measuring sensor is now complete and I have uploaded all design information to my GitHub page. In this video I'm going to show you how you can build your own sensor board and how you can install it to create your own N, HO or G scale track measuring card. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. To make your own sensor PCB you can download the Gerber file from my GitHub page. The link is in the description below. There you also find the bill of materials and the component placement information for the robot in case your PCB manufacturer can assemble the board for you. If you want to make changes to the board I have also published the schematics and the JSON data for the PCB so you can load the files into ECEDA and change as you like. And while you are visiting the GitHub page you may also want to check for the latest software for the IoTT stick. To make purple hat work on the stick you need version 1.5.10 or higher. As always simply download it from GitHub, unzip it to your hard drive and run the update script that loads the new version into the stick. And with that out of the way, let's build the purple hat. As in most cases I had my boards manufactured by JLC PCB and since they do not carry the 3D hall sensor chip, I decided to do the assembly work myself. There are only three SMD parts that need to be soldered to the board, so it is really no big deal. In fact, I think if you have never tried to assemble a PCB with SMD parts, this is the perfect project to get your feet wet. However, if you think that tiny stuff is not made for your fine motoric skills, you can of course also order the ready-made and assembled PCB from my Tindy page, which is also listed in the description below. To get started with the assembly, I identify the locations for the SMD components. The PCB can be assembled in two versions for flat mount and vertical mount. The difference is the location of the 3D hall sensor chip. For the flat mount option it sits in the center of the PCB and for the vertical mount variant at the edge so that it is as low as possible when the PCB is in upright position. The chip resistors are always in the same position, labeled R21 and R31. I chose resistors with 0603 footprint dimensions instead of the smaller 0402 size to make assembly easier. The resistor value is not critical, anything from about 1K to 5K will work. I currently use 4K7 resistors as I have a roll of them from a previous project. First I dispose some soldering paste on the soldering pads. I just hold the needle on the pads and press a little bit to create a thin film of paste on the pad. Don't worry if some paste gets in between or around the pads, the soldering will take care of this. The only thing to be careful about is not to dispose too much solder paste. The main risk is that you get solder bridges between the pins of the hall sensor, so be careful. Next I place the components. I grab them with tweezers and place them on the soldering pads. For the resistors the orientation does not matter. The hall sensor on the other hand needs to be oriented the right way. There is a small dot on the surface of the chip which marks pin 1. This needs to be aligned with pin 1 on the PCB which is also marked with a little white dot. Make sure you get that right or your board will not work and some smoke might come out when applying power to it. Then comes the part I like the most, soldering. I use an air gun set to 250 degrees Celsius and start to heat the area with the components. Be careful not to hold it too close or the components might be blown away. Between 1 and 2 inches normally works well and after about 30 seconds the magic starts to happen. The solder melts, the capillary effect pulls the components in the right position and the soldering joint becomes shiny. Just keep the heat on for a few more seconds and that's it. Let it sit to slowly cool down and you are done with the components. 
Next, cut a piece of eight 90 degree pin headers, place them in the IoT stick and solder them to the PCB. If you plan to use an external battery, also solder a two pin pin header in one of the locations for the battery connector. And that's it. Your purple hat is complete and you are ready to install it in your track measuring core. Let's start with the easy one, G-Scale. Normally there is plenty of room in a G-Scale core, so all we need to do is placing the sensor along the center line of the core and make sure the sensor chip is above the axle with the magnet. As magnets I use two 12 pi by 3 mm round magnets along with 3D printed magnet brackets. You can download the STL file for the brackets from the GitHub page. The magnets go into the brackets and the brackets are mounted in the center of the axle. The magnets will attract each other and keep everything in place. In addition, you may want to use a drop of glue to make it more permanent. That's it for the installation. You now can load the configuration page in the web browser Set the sensor up for G-Scale and you are ready to go. For details, please read the documentation on the IoTT webpage listed in the description below. And for sure I will do some more videos in the future explaining this further. So if you don't want to miss that, it is a good idea to subscribe to the IoTT channel and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when new videos come out. The next example is an installation in an HO scale core. With 20 mm the PCB is narrow enough so that it can be mounted flat in an HO core as well. The only thing to look for is any metal ballast on the base plate of the core. Make sure there is no ferromagnetic material between the axle magnet and the sensor chip, as this would shield the sensor from the magnetic field. If there is, it needs to be cut back a little. The other thing to look for is the soldering joints of the pin headers. Make sure they do not touch any metallic parts of the car that could cause short circuits. In this example, I placed some tape on the ballast and used double sided tape to install the PCB, which gives a certain distance. You may also grind off the tips of the pin header just a little bit to avoid any contact with the base plate. As axle magnets I use 3 by 2 mm magnets. As shown in video number 88, I use a file to create a flat spot on each side of the axle and then place the magnets on the flat spots. Again, they attract each other and the flat spot prevents them from sliding to the side. So the installation is pretty stable. But also here you might want to add a drop of glue to make it even more permanent. An interesting option for the installation in an HO card is vertical mount. For that I use a PCB holder and a support and holder bracket for the IoT stick. All three pieces can easily be 3D printed and the necessary STL files are on GitHub as well. I use some double sided tape to stick the holders to the base plate and then the PCB and IoT stick can be installed. The nice thing about this solution is that you can now make an opening in the side wall of the car so you can see the display as the car travels by. But most likely you find it more convenient anyway to use your smartphone and monitor the data via Wi Fi. Finally, an example for an installation in an N-scale core. The problem here is that the width of the IoT stick is more than the maximum profile width of an N-scale core, so flat installation is probably not possible as it would collide with signals and other structures along the track. Turned upright, however, the stick fits inside the core and also the resulting height is only slightly more than that of an auto rack core, so it should work in most cases even going through tunnels. The next problem is the center of gravity of the IoT stick. If the PCB is installed along the center line of the core, the center of gravity is to the side, which might cause problems with the balance of the core. One option is to mount the PCB in an angle 
so that the IOTT stick is more in the center of the car. If the angle is moderate, this will work even though the magnetic field is now not completely aligned with the sensor. The better option is to cut the PCB between the first and second row of soldering eyes. Yes, I know, that hurts a little bit, but it gives a great deal of flexibility for the installation. After cutting, you can use pin headers or short wires to create an offset so that the IOTT stick sits in the center of the car. Another alternative is to mount the 90 degree pin header directly to the backside of the sensor board and not use the stick adapter part of the PCB at all. For a standard end scale car, this will place the IOTT stick more or less on the center line of the car. When installed like this, you then can make an opening in the car body so that you can see the display of the IOTT stick when the car travels by. And you can make an additional opening at the end of the car for the USB-C connector so that you can recharge the IOTT stick battery without removing any parts from the car. Cutting the PCB between the soldering eyes may actually also be a technique for larger scales. Instead of pins, you could use a piece of ribbon cable to create some distance between the sensor element and the IOTT stick adapter. In an HO car, for example, this method would allow for using a flat mount sensor element and still have the IOTT stick placed in an upright position, so that you can read the display from the side. And to make things even simpler, there is no need to run all 8 wires to the sensor element. You only need to connect pins 2, 4, 6 and 8 to make the sensor work. And if you want to connect a second battery to the sensor element, you also need to connect pin number 3. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you. And you have a better idea now how to make and install a purple head sensor to create a track measuring card for your model railroad layout. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. Doing so keeps me motivated and helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general because YouTube likes the likes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.